everyone, how are you going? I wanted to talk to you about text response prompts because this is something that a lot of students get scared about when they're going into an exam, that they don't know what the question's going to ask and they're not quite sure how to plan and prepare for the question. So I wanted to look at the different types of questions you may be asked, the different parts of the structure of a question and help you to break that question down and get some ideas from it. And I'll also give you some tips at the end. There are three types of questions you may be asked. Theme-based questions, character-based questions, and author-based questions. When you're doing your revision, you can group your information into these three categories as a way to plan for your essays. Theme-based questions are something like this. What does Medea reveal is the difference between revenge and justice? So the obvious theme here is revenge and justice. And you might have brainstormed a whole heap of quotes to do with those themes that will help you be in a good place when you get that sort of question. The other type of question is a character-based questions. For example, Medea is in the end careless of family ties, ties by the men, Creon, Jason and Aegeus are zealously concerned with their family interests. Do you agree? This question may on the surface appear to be asking you to talk about the specific characters, but it's actually wanting you to go beyond just that and look at what they represent. It's a men versus women sort of question, family ties versus family interests sort of question. So you want to move beyond just the characters. It's also really uh, easy to get trapped into just responding to one character or the main characters, especially if you get a question like this one. Madeira is not a crazy woman, which makes it all the more frightening. It would be easy to write just an entire essay on Medea's state of mind, but you want to move beyond that. You want to think about who would see her as crazy, why is she frightening, who is she frightening to, and what is Euripides trying to say about women through Medea. The other type of question you might get is an author-based question. This is a question that relates specifically to the way the author has constructed the piece or what message the author wants to get across to the audience. So for example, identify how Euripides uses the three classical unities to manipulate his audience. If you're not sure about the three classical unities, feel free to look them up. Basically it's unity of time, place and plot. Yeah, that sort of question is wanting you to look at how he uses these unities to get his audience to feel what they feel and react the way they react. Euripides is essentially representing the conservative view which reinforces the patriarchal stereotypes and male fears about women. This is about the purpose that Euripides has in, in writing his piece, writing the play, and the first one's about the craft of writing. Within these types, these categories of questions, you've also got different styles of questions. So you might have a direct question, so that would be a straightforward one. You might have a propositional question, so a specific view on the text that you're invited to challenge. So it might be a statement like this one here. It starts with a statement and then says to what extent you do agree. Or it might be a discuss. Or you might get a quotation question and this is like a starting point for your thinking. So you have a quotation from the text and then below that a question that it wants you to respond to in relation to the quote above. You do need to include the quote in your discussion. I advise my students to include it at some point in the introduction or even in the conclusion. You can use it as your evidence in the body paragraphs, but it better not be the only bit of evidence you use, otherwise it sure shows you haven't really read much beyond there. You also want to be thinking about the different parts of the question, and knowing the different parts of the question helps you understand what it's actually asking you to do. So the key words in an essay question are usually topic related. They're specific to the text that you're talking about. There's usually going to be two parts, so there might be two themes or two characters, there might be an author part and a theme part. You want to really be looking at what part of this question is talking about the text in particular. Then you're also going to have a directive word. Words like explore or discuss are asking you to consider the different audience perspectives on the question. Those who agree or disagree, an original audience's response compared to uh, a modern audience. 
what the minor characters might think about this, what the author thinks about the statement. A question that, a directive word that has evaluate or do you agree is asking you to confirm or challenge it or both and to think about to what extent you agree. A question that starts with uh, describe or how is an author craft or an author purpose question. If you get a question like how does Medea put her cunning to use in the play, it's not just wanting you to describe the moments in the play where Medea is cunning and there are a few. It's asking you to think about how does Euripides make her seem cunning and why does he make her seem cunning. You also want to note any limiting words. And these words are very important. They're usually dogmatic or contentious words are inviting you to look at and ponder and possibly disagree with or challenge. And it's these limiting words that are essentially what the essay wants you to discuss. You don't want to ignore these. So words like only one, Madeira is the only one to feel this, or completely, should not, hate would be a contentious word. Essentially, or is not, or it is. It's trying to force you to entirely agree with the statement and they're the moments you want to look for because they're the moments you can uh, stand apart from what the statement is saying. It'll make more sense when I show you what I'm talking about. So for example, if this was our essay question, it's not possible to take sides at the end of the play. Both Medea and Jason are equally repugnant. Do you agree? Take a second and see if you can identify the keywords, the directive words and the limiting words. Hopefully you'll be able to see that these are the keywords here. It takes sides, Medea and Jason, and repugnant. These are the things that come from the play and are specific to this, the text that we're talking about. The limiting words, remember, are the words that you can argue with. These are the really provocative words that are sort of asking to be argued with. It is not possible to take sides, really. Well, it is possible. I might pick Medea over Jason, or I might pick Jason over Medea. The fact that they've said not possible is arguing with me to say, well, actually, I disagree. Also, the word equally is a challenging word. It's putting the, that phrase that they are both the same, exactly the same in the, the amount of hatred that we have for them or the amount of ugliness that comes out from them. And again, I could easily argue with that point there. Those limiting words are where the flesh of your essay can come to play. And the directive word, do you agree? Think of it as a continuum. You might agree with part of it and disagree with the other part. You might say that they are both repugnant, but Medea more so than Jason. Down the bottom here, you'll notice the ATAR notes link. The, that is an essay that a student has written in response to this question. Feel free to jump on there and see how someone might respond to this and it also might be a good way to remind you how to actually structure an essay. ATAL Notes is a brilliant resource for getting some feedback from other students and from teachers to get some different opinions on how to improve your writing. I'd also ask you with this sort of question to think beyond just the two characters, Medea and Jason. It would be really easy to write one paragraph about why Medea is repugnant, another paragraph about why Jason is repugnant, and another paragraph about why they both deserve what they got in the end. But that's not really what high level thinking sort of response would have. A high level thinking response would say, why are they repugnant to us? Or you might say, neither of them are repugnant. Neither of them are to blame for what happened. It's just human nature in general that's repugnant or society or the gods that we see through the lens of the characters of Medea and Jason. Think beyond just the two characters mentioned in the essay question to help you get to that higher level in your responses. Have another go here. What are the key words? What are the limiting words? And what are the directing words? So hopefully you've got reason and passion as your keywords. These are the two themes that are being brought up and usually these themes sit side by side. The directive words, discuss. It's wanting you to explore all the different perspectives on this. And then we have the limiting word, crucial conflict. Can I just say this was a VCAE exam question from last year and a lot of students forgot that part. They talked about reason versus passion and they forgot about the crucial conflict part of the question. This is looking at why reason is always up against passion. 
what it is about reason and passion and how that conflict within ourselves, within the characters, the individuals, uh, was so important. And how not just within them, but between different characters which represented this. Jason, for example, represents for many reason, and Medea represents passion and the conflict between them. But you also can step back and look at the big picture again, the way that society values one versus the other and how we actually need both. And you need a conflict between both. I think that's what Euripides is saying about this, um, that you need to have both reason and passion and you need to constantly be trying to balance these these things out. You don't want to be entirely one or the other. You need that conflict, that crucial conflict. And be careful not to go off topic. If you've looked at this and you've gone, the crucial conflict is the limiting word so I could talk about any conflict I see, that it's not just reason and passion that's a crucial conflict i might also want to talk about justice versus revenge that's a conflict as well no nah, that's not what the question is talking about be careful not to go off topic this is what the essay question wants you to talk about don't go making up your own question if you want to have a look at another sample again go to atal notes Again, try to think about your essay response as a continuum. The questions that you are going to be asked are going to have the opportunity and the evidence to support either side. You could say that one is to blame. You can say that both are to blame. You can say that Medea is insane. You can say that she's completely in control. You can say that Euripides is a misogynist, you can say he's a feminist. Those sort of questions that you are going to get are going to be on a continuum. You're going to agree with part of it, but not the whole thing. Or you're going to disagree with part of it, but there's going to be exceptions. So try to think of your answer as being on a continuum. Think to what extent do I agree? In what circumstances do I agree? And again, that's going to give you a much more complex, higher order thinking contention to your essay.